In this video, we'll be taking apart the Samsung Galaxy A15. And if you're interested in seeing more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and click on the notification bell so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. Also, if you need any tools, there are links in the description. Before we start, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Here's a look at the SIM tray. Now heat needs to be applied to the back plate using a hairdryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath, and then a plastic pry tool can be used to pry the back plate off. Here's a look at the plastic backplate. The glass camera lens covers can be replaced by applying heat and gently prying them off. So you don't need to take apart the phone to replace those. So at this point, there are 15 Phillips screws that have to be removed. The fingerprint sensor cable can now be disconnected. Now a plastic pry tool needs to be placed in between the back housing and the frame of the screen and ran along the edges to pop off the catches. The back housing is also made of plastic. There's an NFC antenna located here as well as an antenna flex cable on the bottom. Looking at the other side, we can see some graphite film which helps to transfer heat. There are also additional flex cables on the top. The battery cable can now be disconnected, followed by the rest of the cables. This flex cable connects the main board to the screen and the subboard. If you needed to replace this screen, you'd have to remove the back plate, the screws and the back housing, at which point you'd disconnect the flex cable which connects the screen to the main board, you'd pry off the screen flex cable from the subboard, and then you'd heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, you'd pry your old screen off, apply a new adhesive, and reapply the new screen making sure you run the flex cable back to the opening in the mid frame, and reassemble the phone. The two coaxial cables on the right side of the motherboard can be disconnected by just popping them off. There's a single Phillips screw which is holding down the main board. Taking a closer look at the main board, we can see a 5 megapixel ultra wide lens, a 50 megapixel primary camera, and a 2 megapixel macro lens. None of the cameras have OIS or optical image stabilization. The camera connectors can be disconnected by just popping them off. There's an LED flash located here, and there are rubber gaskets around the connectors. I'm surprised they include rubber gaskets around the connectors, since the SIM tray itself doesn't have one. Taking a look at the other side, we can see the 13 megapixel front facing camera, a secondary microphone, a light sensor, and the SIM and memory card reader. There's also some heat transfer film or foil over the back shields. Peeling that off reveals thermal paste on top of the processor. Once the motherboard has been removed, we can see additional thermal pads underneath on top of the frame. Now to remove the battery, there's a pull pouch provided to help you pry the battery off.
Here's a look at the 5000 mAh battery. There's a single Phillips screw that's holding down the subboard. So looking at the subboard, we can see the headphone jack located here, the primary microphones located here, and the charger port is located next to that. Here's a look at the other side. For anyone who accidentally inserted a SIM ejector tool into the microphone hole or opening, you don't need to worry on this phone, since the filter for the microphone and the microphone itself are both seated above the hole, and they won't get damaged. The vibrator motor is located on the bottom corner and it's held on with some adhesive. If you wanted to replace that, you just have to apply some heat and gently pry it off. There's a liquid damage indicator sticker located here and one which is seated on the frame underneath the SIM tray. The flex cable for the volume keys is located on this side, which is also held on with some adhesive. To replace that, you just have to gently pry it off. And the same goes for the earpiece speaker located on top. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it an 8.5 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything's back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the back plate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.